is where the rim was. Exactly where he was and where the rim was. White and LaMelo. YouTube, how's everyone doing? Jags to Riches, James Peters, thank you all so much for your time. NBA preseason, Boston Celtics have now wrapped up their second and third preseason game. Quite a bit going on around the team, in fact, around the league in general. Now, today I want to speak on both of the games briefly. Game two, uh, look at the box score, the lost in overtime to Toronto. Uh, and then, is of course, the um, game three last night against the Hornets coming back from a double digit deficit. A lot of the starters and core players not playing in the Boston Celtics would pull out a win in game three to be two and one now in the preseason with one game remaining prior to NBA tip off. In addition to that, we had, of course, Blake Griffin making his debut here in the game three. Sam Hauser, Sam lights out Hauser, Sam mania, whatever you want to call it. We got to speak on Sam. I want to talk again a little bit more on Jalen Brown and what I think is a really big year in coming. And then, of course, speaking on Blake's debut, I just want to reassess the big man in our front court situation. Just a reevaluation now because of Play Griffin's performance last night and then Noah Vonley's as well. He's somebody I've spoke on a few times. So, um, again, just um, just to want to, you know, take a look at it again. And then I want to. This is obviously a Boston Celtics channel. Make no mistake about it. I love that team more than anything else. And it will always, they will always be the priority here. I do want to speak on other big topics around the NBA, especially throughout this season. I don't know if I'll ever devote an entire video to it. And if I do, it might be a shorter video. But um, what I am going to do is speak on the Draymond Queen situation. Obviously, you know, the sucker punch to Jordan Poole. And just trying to kind of give a, a, an immediate reaction. It is everywhere. It is ugly. It is vicious. It is, it, it, there's, it's, it's a big deal. Like, let's put it like that. So let's get into everything. But of course, let's start right off the bat with the Boston Celtics game two loss to the Toronto Raptors, 125, 119. Now, this was a game where the Celtics starters pretty much played throughout to the third quarter. Now, when when they would actually sit right they had just under a 20 point lead i think it was about four maybe four and a half somewhere right around the four minute mark in the third quarter when every you know the tatums and the smarts everyone sat down right 19 20 point lead now jalen brown has been a man on a mission so far i mean you looked at him in game one came out with 24 right he's going to follow that up in game two what a 23 point performance as you see here another good shooting nine for 14 three for six from the three jason tatum 18 points 10 rebounds four assists he was 0 for 7 from the three i do believe for his preseason which is only going to be the two games now i want to say he's two for 15 shooting from three so you definitely want to see you know a much better performance from tatum i mean He's averaging about 17 points right now between the two games. So, again, very early for him, but you do like what you've seen from Jalen Brown thus far. And then, of course, Sam Hauser. I mean, this was Sam's breakout game. We spoke on him after his game one performance where he had 14 points. He was four for five from the three. But as you see, this one is where he went off 22 points in 26 minutes. He was five, four, eight from the three. And, I mean, he... Wow, right? He was a guy, like I said, last year in the G League, let it up. I mean, I think he averaged right around 17 points, shot 40 plus percent on nearly 10 attempts, had his moments. And then again, in summer league, uh, it's looking like he was injured. We know he only played the first two games, struggled in the first one, looked better in the second one. But man, has he looked awesome to start the preseason thus far. I mean, you're talking about in the three games, and of course, we'll, we'll get to game three in a second, but let's just through the first two games so going into game three this dude was nine for 13 from the three shooting at 69 percent going into game three i mean that that is something serious and again i've i've talked about malcolm brogdon and his connection so far i mean him and brogdon brogdon 
didn't play in game three. But in both game one and game two, Brogdon went nine assists in each of those games. And I, it was just, he was finding Sam all over the place. And I'm like, what the hell is that connection from? And of course, you got to remember, shout out to their Virginia connection, man. Both collegiate played at Virginia, kind of had a similar path, you know, played, you know, multiple years there. Brogdon, second round pick, Sam undrafted. So, hey, man, maybe those guys bonded and, you know, Brogdon just recognizes what this guy could potentially be. So, Shout out to Sam Hauser. I love it, man. And that young man might be here to stay. I mean, I'm all for it. But another guy quickly I want to talk about is Peyton Pritchard. Quietly, man. I feel like he's been, I mean, looking awesome. I mean, with our backcourt, or excuse me, um, yeah, with our um, backcourt, yes, looking like it has. I mean, with Smart and Brogdon and White and Brown. I mean, loaded, right? Pritchard just kind of going under the radar. He had a 17-point performance, 7 for 14 from the field, 3 for 8 in the game too liking what i'm seeing from peyton pritchard man for real and then of course the celtics would have 31 assists in this game that was after a 41 41 assist performance in game one so in addition they only had 10 turnovers in game two so again they did get a loss in overtime but i mean at that point I mean, even into the fourth quarter, they had a 10-point lead with like seven minutes to go. And at that point is when they put in like the Broderick Thomas, Justin Jackson, um, Fiondu, Peyton Pritchard, and Sam Hauser. So again, starters handled business. They have been playing at an extremely high pace and have been just looking dominant thus far, controlling both sides of the court. And I've loved what I've seen. Again, Jalen Brown looks like a man on a mission. Sam Hauser, awesome game. But shout out to the Toronto Raptors. Now moving on to game three against the Charlotte Hornets. Now coming off of that game one win, they beat them 134 to 93, 40 plus point win. So, you know, Charlotte wanted some get back. Now heading into that game, the Celtics, as you can see here, had quite a few people not playing. Tatum, Horford, Cabin Jelly. Obviously, you know about Rob and Cornette and Gallo, but then Brogdon, Smart. So a lot of their guys weren't even actually playing in this one. But again, this is a game where the Celtics would face. I believe it was a 16-point deficit at a point. I mean, no Tatum, no Smart, no Al, no Brogdon, right? You're looking out of a starting unit of Derek White, Jalen Brown, who opted to play tonight sam hauser grant williams and noah bondley now celtics shot 44 percent from three would have a 27 assist game now they did have 20 turnovers to charlotte's 10 i would like to see that cleaned up and again charlotte pretty much had a double digit lead throughout the opening half i mean you look at some of the guys kelly Oubre, you know obviously lamello ball with the Bridges situation, Hayward's injuries, some of those guys, of course, Terry Rozier, they're going to have to step up big this year. But again, Jalen Brown leading the way, 25 minutes, he would have 19 points, 6 for 14 from the field, 5 for 8, great shooting from the three. Big game from Derek White. Again, I feel like I've, I he has looked great in preseason in game two and game three. Six for 10 from the field, five, two for five from the three. He would have 18 points, four rebounds, six assists. And as you've seen in the opening, put LaMelo Ball on skates, had him visiting Dancing with the Stars, special edition. I mean, wow. He was attacking, penetrating, just looked great, man. I've really been impressed. And like I said, I expect a much bigger year from Derek White in year two. People really forget that the two years prior to him coming to Boston in San Antonio, the man basically averaged right around 15 points, three and three, something along those lines. Obviously a great two-way player. And he was never a number one option. He was more like the number three, right? Behind obviously DeJounte Murray, DeMar DeRozan, you know, et cetera. So expect a big year from Derek White. Love what I've seen from him. But again, let's talk about Noah Bonley. This is a gentleman who I have alluded to a few times in previous videos that I thought that out of all of the, you know, bigs that they brought in this offseason, he had the best chance of making the team and actually making an impact just based on, you know, this is a gentleman that was what the ninth overall picked and has had some success. I believe what it was the 18, 19 season where he started, you know, 50 something games and averaged about what, eight points, eight rebounds, something along those lines. And that was the same team with the Knicks where Luke Cornett was his backup. Like they both played actually in both of them. That was their career best in 2018, 2019, both shot well from three. So tonight you would see him get 14 points, 13 rebounds. Very impressed with him. 
Now, Sam Hauser, Sam Mania, again, nine points. He was three, four, seven from the three, bringing his total from through three, th three, excuse me, bringing his total through three preseason games to 12 from 20 from three, excuse me. But we would also see the debut of Blake Griffin. Boston Celtics would bring in this, you know, former superstar lob city i mean blake griffin is i mean one of the premier superstars of today's game i mean some incredible years with him cp3 and obviously Deont Dom, uh, deandre jordan out in um la and then even in detroit man he had some good years obviously spent the last two years with brooklyn but blake 16 minutes seven points nine rebounds i thought he looked good you know for a guy that's really not practiced with the team pretty much came in you know playing with a bunch of guys he's not familiar with i like some of the things we've seen from him not the best shooting only one from four from three one from six from the field but again nine rebounds you take that with bondley's 13 we're in some business now showing some respect to the opponent of course lamello ball 23 points nine assists and then of course kelly Oubre jr i expect a pretty big year from him and coming with 18 points you had terry rose with 14 points now let's briefly talk about sam hauser sam mania i'm not going to spend too much time on it i just went over some of the numbers 12 for 20 i mean just kid 14 point game 20 plus point game nine point game excellent shooting i love what i've seen from him he was a guy i was not very sure about they re-signed um hey i really think that he has a strong chance to not only crack this roster and rotation but to make a really big impact whenever he's on the court he's the best shooter on our team out there and that's not even close i mean he is a cerebral sharp shooting just I mean, 40 plus percent on 10 attempts from the G League, and you see him just a beautiful, just automatic shot, man. If you can get him, and I, I believe he said it beautifully, and it makes so much sense. I've never had to come off the bench. Last year, my rookie year at Boston was the first time I've ever had to come off the bench. As a shooter, it's difficult to come off cold and try to instantly get in rhythm. You're instantly supposed to come in and start lighting up threes. Whereas, as you know, basketball rhythm. That's what it's all about, finding your shot. And, of course, when you're used to playing 30 minutes a game and getting however many shots he was getting in high school and college, you can understand the difference in the transition. So I expect a big year from Sam Hauser, you know, and everyone was disappointed and was asking the questions of what now when Gallo was injured. Sam Hauser, you know, really can fit the bill of what Gallo was going to provide us, I think, almost verbatim. And I think that he... Will be ha has been getting the opportunity and has been rising to the occasion. Very proud of Sam Hauser and looking forward to what that man brings to this this team this season. A hot take I'm going to throw out. If I was going to throw out a hot take this season, Jalen Brown, at least in the start, I would not be surprised if the first half of this year, at at, at minimum, he is not outperforming Jason Tatum. Again, guys, I love Jason Tatum more than any other player in this league. But for some reason, I just it just appears to me that Jalen Brown this year is going to be a man possessed, right? I think he's sick of all that KD shit in the summer. I think, meanwhile, while all the rumors and all that drama was going on, he was in the lab working harder than ever. Is a little pissed he didn't make an all-star team. Is a little pissed they should have won you know an nba championship up to one in that game four right i think jalen brown is going to just wow I, i'm expecting an all nba without question an all-star level season from jalen i've said it i think you could see like a 26 six and four and you know right out the gates from him and tatum you can see it looks like he's still trying to find his rhythm find his shot he's looked good on the um as, you know on the boards getting 10 a game and that's going to be very important as well as that's why i kind of you know highlighted both blake and bondley no rob williams guys so rebounds things like that are very important little things but again Jalen brown just looks like he is on something else that is a hot take obviously good chance jason tatum's out there doing what jason tatum does but again people for the longest have been saying that brown's better brown's better and while i still don't believe that i do believe that that argument is going to be stronger than ever to start this year because I think Jalen's just going to be on fire. Our big man rotation, again, Blake Griffin's debut, not spectacular, right? I mean, but 
we don't need him to be. We just need him to come in, be solid, and do exactly what he did. Seven points, nine rebounds, 16 minutes. That's a perfect game from Blake. Man, if he can do that, set screens, pick and roll, dive on the... We've got all the damn charge leaders with him and Smart and Derek White. Hustle. Little things like that, man. He will be fine, especially now that I've seen him. Noah Vonley, I'm liking what I've seen from Noah. Right, I was kind of excited about his potential as maybe that third big behind Rob and Al. And now I am even more so because you've got him. I've liked what I've seen. you got Fionn Ducab. I like what I've seen. And now Blake. So you still got to remember Luke Cornett was running with the ones. And then, oh, by the way, at the midpoint or at least in the back end of the season, you got one of the best centers in the game coming back with Rob Williams. So feeling a lot better about this front court, you know, and the emergence of some of these players, like I've just mentioned, Sam Hauser, you know, Fiondu, Noah, even Blake Griffin. So um, I definitely believe that, you know, they made the right move because there was a lot, you know, trade this and do that. And you know, I mean, small, simple moves over the tax, over the salary. I mean, I, I've, again, loving what I'm seeing from this team. And you can just see that especially with the core and the starters out there, man, they look like they are just at another level. I love what Brad has done. Shout out to Joe right now. I mean, this team's got so much of a spotlight with all the bullshit going on and they have responded. I know it's preseason, but again, it's not a much, as much about w what they're doing to the opponent. It's what, what the team looks like itself. How focused are they? Have they let the bullshit affect them? And so far, man, everything looks really good. Very proud of this team. As I'm gonna end today, Speaking on the Draymond Green, Jordan Poole situation, just briefly, everyone has seen it. Obviously, we heard about it first that there was an altercation between the two of them. And at that point, I really wasn't on either side. I, I'll be honest, man. I'm not the biggest Draymond Green fan. In fact, I do not like him at all, right? And you could throw the, you're biased, they beat you in the finals at me. Maybe a little, sure. But I love Steph Curry. I love Klay Thompson. Those are two of my favorite players. I mean, so it's not entirely that. It's the fact of just how Draymond Green has to play the game. You know, it's to me like when Jalen said it, he mucks up the game. And and to me, if if you are a skilled player, you don't have to do all that extra bullshit. Like, and you can now see it spills over to what he to what he, this altercation ended up being. It ended up being a 32-year-old man sucker punching, what, a 22, how old is Paul, 22 or just turned 23? Teammate during practice because you're salty, he's going to get paid before you. Really think of that for a second. Draymond Green, this is all being reported that they're pissed because Poole's been acting brand new because he's going to get paid. I honestly was never that big on pool because I've heard stories about him being kind of like a little shit. You know, like I heard uh, Dame Lillard tell a story about how pool was talking shit on the sideline before he was even like legit of a player when he was still in the G league. So I've never been that big on pool. I thought he was kind of like, you know, like a little shit at 20 year old, 21 year old. I mean, right. So, it, you know, but then when you see this video and just how vicious it was and how Draymond instigated it and how pool, of course, push the man off him. Get the fuck off me. Why are you up on me like that? And then wasn't even looking at him and you are going to hit that man like that. I I'm surprised his jaw wasn't broken. Like basically knocked him out. Like that is, I can promise you their relationship will never be the same. There is no coming back from that. And Draymond Green's days in Golden State are numbered. I've already said, I think he's the most overrated player maybe of all time. He has been in the best situation imaginable, right? Let me ask you something. If you took Draymond Green off the, any of those Golden State teams and put Al Horford, is Al Horford a multiple-time champion? I would think so, right? When you play with Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, KD, I mean, just these teams that he has been on, right? Averaging seven points in the NBA Finals. There was a, I don't even think he hit a three, right? Literally had to get benched at points and you're bitching about a max contract? You literally go and sucker punch this young kid because what, he's about to get paid and you're pissed that you... This dude's about to make $27 million this year. Imagine someone making 27 million and being salty. 
bro, you are make my point is he's making money that some of us will never be able to understand. You are living a life, bro, that I mean, bro, you are set. You are Draymond Green, a champion, a, a guy who has made tens of millions in the league, who's gonna who would have had a guaranteed gig set up in like commentating and podcasting. Like it's just it baffles me. The dude is a coward. He's a bully. And I think that he has always been right. He has all this is who he has always been. And it is just sometimes, you know, you need a camera around and someone willing to leak some shit to actually see who someone is. You need to see the footage, right? My goodness, because of course, nobody thought that was going to get out. Right. But I like somebody who was it? I think Jalen Rose said it like somebody leaked that on purpose because they wanted people to see draymond green for what he really is they wanted him to be seen in this light and again i i think his ass is the days are numbered for him in golden state i think this he's got what this season and then a player option so yeah he might play out this season and then that will be it guys but again um i don't ever i mean if it was out on the streets you know it's one thing you know I, I, you're fighting to win and fighting for survival but in practice with a teammate, someone that you just won a championship with, someone who you're literally 10 plus years older than, you're supposed to be the leader, this is your brother. I mean, smack him on his ass, sit him down and say, bro, you need to check yourself and be humble, right? Like you're, you need, you're, you're not wanting to what? Conform to your role that we're asking you to do. Every person on this team is making a hundred million, right? So it's like, you gotta sometimes get whatever the problem is, just sit the kid down, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know you would never have done this shit to Steph Curry. <laughs> but anyways, guys, um, Boston Celtics 2-1, and one, um, looking like a, a team primed and ready to rock and roll, guys. We've got one more game. It's against Toronto next next Friday. Excuse me. Yeah, next Friday will be the final preseason game four. That is actually going to be the 14th. And then that following Tuesday, the 18th, is game one, tip-off against Philly. Thank you all so much for your time. Jags to riches, James Peters. I hope you have an excellent rest of your weekend. Take care, guys. Thank you again.